Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I have learned as I have grown into the person that I am today. How are you doing, buddy? What is, you just knocked my glasses off. You wanna put them on? Okay. Anyway, um, today we're gonna read some meditation books. They are so hyped up today. They have been running around the house. What? I'm reading meditation. See, there's the cameras right there. Do you see it? Do you even see it? Oh, by the way, I just have to, an apolo I have to apologize for something. So I uh, was holding him up in the thumbnail the other day. Oh, there's Boo Radley. And I titled the video, I think it's time. And um, you guys, I just so randomly picked the titles for my videos. Like, I really don't even think much about it. And um, like, I, I think I was talking about it's time for me to get back to doing gratitude lists and things like that. And so many people thought that it was about us getting a new dog. No, we're not in a position to get a new dog right now. We don't want a new dog right now. We're still, uh, you know, waiting that one out. But when the time is right, trust me, I will, I will make a video called We're Getting a New Dog or We Got a New Dog or whatever. And no, that's not what that was about. So I apologize for that and people thought that it was clickbait. Okay. Tucker, can you move over there? Can you move? Okay. Come on. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Let's, there. Oh, he's back. Okay. Let's get into these books today. Let's try from the Melody Beatty, A Journey to the Heart, today. Uh, November, where are my glasses? Up oh, there they are. You were just smelling them for me, buddy. Okay. Ooh, they are hyped up. <laughs> it's time for your dad to come home. Okay. November 8th. Oh, November 3rd. Uh, you haven't lost your place. Sometimes when life shifts and changes, it can feel like we've lost... Oh, I wanted to make one last comment really quick. Um... So many people commented in the comment section about getting the magic book and that they're waiting for it. And I mean, I, I was really surprised how many people like ordered it. I, that's really exciting. I'm so excited that we're doing that together. Um, I think that what would be best is to wait. I like to start it like on a fresh day, like on a fresh week. So I think it would be best if we waited till Monday, which will give everybody time to get their book if they want to get it. So we're going to start it on Monday. Start your gratitude list. Now, all you have to have, you can just have, you know, scraps of paper. You don't even have to have a notebook, you know, to do a gratitude list every day. You can just use your phone. You can put it in your phone. You don't have to you just erase it every day. You don't have to keep it. I like to write down the things I'm grateful for and then read them out loud. I learned that. Actually, I think I might have learned that from the book Magic because um, you're going to do a gratitude list with that as, every day as well. But let's start it on Monday, and that way it'll give people enough time to get the book if they're wanting to. Okay? All right. Back to the Melody Beatty uh, book. November 3rd, you haven't lost your place. Sometimes when life shifts and changes, it can feel like we've lost our place. During those times when our lives are changing, we may feel out of tune, out of rhythm, out of balance, out of step. Maybe an old feeling is surfacing clearing so that we can learn something new and move forward to a new place. Maybe our attention is being diverted, being diverted to a new focus so we can find and experience another lesson. Sometimes the form or shape of our life is changing dramatically. The old picture is being erased so a new one can be drawn. Familiar people are leaving, new people are entering. We may ache, feel irritable, and doubt the course of our entire journey. We may doubt whether the magical way we were living was even real and whether the magic will ever return. This is such a good meditation. Uh, let the changes happen. Take extra loving care of yourself. Be attentive to what you need. The magic isn't gone. It hasn't disappeared. You're just going through a shift. That means things are moving and movement is good. For now, it may feel like you can't find your place, but that's because your place is changing. I love, 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 love this meditation. <laughs> love, 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 love. Um, you know, I think, I talk a lot about transition periods over here. It's interesting because when I uh, started doing the cameo thing, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I started cameo, which is like <clears throat> people pay and like they get like birthday sh messages and whatever. And, and I try to do really like make them really special. And, um, I was actually talking to somebody and they were like, how long do you do? Like 30 or 40 seconds. And I was like, what? They're like, yeah, like I do like 30 or 40 seconds. And I was like, mine are like four or five minutes. <laughs> They're like, really? I was like, I have so much fun doing the cameos, but I get so many, uh, people that reach out to me and ask me for like a pep talk. And I won't give any, like, advice. I mean, like, I will give, like, life advice, but that's by, about as much as I'll give on there. But anyway, um, people ask for pep talks, and they'll say, you know, like, I feel like I've lost my way, and just, you know, like, whatever. And, you know, 
I always say, and it's just kind of something that I said naturally one day during one of the cameos, but like I was like, I really believe that to be true. You know, on those moments, in those, not moments, but those periods of life where we're in it, we're stuck and we can't move forward. And we feel, I just said this actually in a cameo just yesterday and we're down and we're like, we feel like we've lost our way, right? It's like, I don't. I don't have the strength to get out of this situation that I'm in or, and I'm and, and talking about very, very serious situations, obviously that you need to see professional help for that. But I'm talking about just like when you're going through a rut in life where you feel like it's just life's never going to get better. And you know, maybe you went through a bad breakup and you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe just things don't, aren't, don't seem to be going your way right now. And you've kind of lost that strength and that spirit. The reality I believe is that it, if you've ever had it before, if you ever had that positivity and that strength and that ability to put one foot in front of the other and make the most of your life, you haven't lost it. You just, like, it's not gone completely. It's down inside of you. You just need to pull it back out, right? It's disguised right now. Or maybe we think that we don't have it, but it's still down in there, right? So when people say to me, like, please give me a pep talk, like, you know, like, I'm always... Like, you are the one that can pep talk yourself because you have it inside of you. Like, we, each of us inside of us, like, have that like, kind of God consciousness that, like, even if you're not a believer in a higher power, it's like, okay, that all of what you need is inside of you to get through and to let yourself know you're going to be okay, right? You know, I've had a lot of people in my life tell me things, like, when I'm going through tough times in my life, they're like, oh, you're going to be okay, and things are going to get better, and it's interesting because whenever I say that on here, like, you guys are going to be okay, like, things, you know, are going to get better, people are always like, thank you so much for saying that, I really appreciate it, but the reality is that when I have told myself that I was going to be okay, like, really thought it to myself, like, you know, you're going to be okay. Like, you're going to, like, like when I was, like, lost my mom, like, when I eventually realized, you know, you're going to be okay, was when things started changing for me. Because I knew it to be true inside, right? Like, I knew there was going to be a day. I didn't know when. I didn't know how long. But I knew there was going to be a day when I no longer was as sad as I was. When, and I was kind of sa scared about that day because, you know, I didn't want to, like, forget about my mom and all that kind of stuff. But I knew that there was going to be a day when I looked back and I was like, there are better days ahead. And I would look back on my life and be like, yeah, that was a really hard time, you know. But we're forever changing. We're forever evolving. We're forever going through transition periods, you know. Um, and I just, we're talking about that. I feel like I've been talking about that a lot. Maybe it's because that's the theme of these books recently. I don't know. All right, let's get into the next one and see what it says. How, where am I at on time? Okay, um, let's see if there's a short one here. Okay, October 3rd, getting, this is from The, Day, the Language of Letting Go by Melody Baby. Uh, getting through the discomfort, October 3rd. Surrender to the pain, then learn to surrender to the good. It's there and more is on the way. Beyond codependency. I feel like I remember reading this last year. Our goal in, I mean, last year as far as on a video. Our goal in recovery is to make ourselves feel comfortable, peaceful, and content, happy. We want to be at peace with ourselves and our environment. Sometimes to do that, we need to be willing to face, feel, and get through discomfort. We were just talking about this. I am not talking here about being addicted to misery and pain. I am not talking about creating unnecessary pain. I'm talking about the legitimate discomfort we sometimes need to feel as we heal. When we have surgery, the pain hurts most the day after the operation. When we do the kind of work we are facing in recovery, we are doing an emotional, mental, and spiritual surgery on ourselves. We're removing parts of us that are infected and infl inflamed. Sometimes the process hurts. We are strong enough to survive discomfort and temporary feelings of emotional pain. Once we are willing to face and feel our discomfort and pain, we are almost to the point of release. Today I am willing to face my discomfort, trusting that healing and release are on the other side. Help me, God, be open to feeling whatever I need to feel to be healed and healthy. While I am doing, while I am doing this, I will trust I am cared for and protected by myself, my friends, my higher power, and the universe. That's a great meditation. I'm going to read this quote again from Beyond Codependency. Surrender to the pain, then learn to surrender to the good. It's there and more is on the way. Um... I think that goes along the way. Well, first of all, I think any kind of emotional work that we do on ourselves is really taxing and tough, you know? And we don't really think of it that way. It's like, you know, I, I used this analogy for a long time that, um, you know, when you build yourself up mentally, it's like, uh, 
it's like how you work out in a gym and you lift weights. I know I it doesn't look like I know a lot about it, but back in the day I used to like be in the gym all the time. Um, but the thing is that you break down your muscle and then you build it back up, right? And it's stronger than it was before. And, and so that's kind of what you do when you work on yourself, whether it's through counseling or coaching or therapy or at 12 step program or church or journaling or workbooks or whatever you do, you know, meditation that uh inventory evaluation all of that it's like that's what happens is that you you break yourself down but then you build yourself back up again and you're stronger than you were before right i think the surrendering to the good thing is really an interesting uh uh, point of topic you know like I, I've said this a lot on here and this has been probably one of my really valuable lessons I have learned in 2020 in all honesty is that there is peace and serenity and happiness out there on a daily basis, okay? Every day that I wake up, I can be happy, joyous, and free. The decision and the choice is mine. Sure, there's going to be tragedy that happens. There's going to be horrible things that happen. But I even know people that handle tragedy and horrific events with absolute grace. H have you ever known anybody like that? That's who I aim to be. And one of the things I have learned this year, the, the thing that I, I just said was probably the, the best, the most profound points is that those days of being content of being peaceful and serene. I'm not talking about overabundant joy. I'm not talking about overwhelming happiness. I'm talking about those days of peace and serenity, those days of just being content are really, really underrated. Like I, back in the day, would just, I almost kind of just complained for the point of complaining, you know? Instead of just being like, today is a really good day. You know, it's a beautiful like dusk outside and I'm getting ready to run to Target to look for more like flannel sheets, you know? And, um, you know, and I had candle waxes burning last night. I had, it was like apple in here, crispy apple candle waxes. And, you know, it's just been, it, I've had a really great day today and night last night. And it's, you know, I think about really appreciating those moments and looking at the good looking at the amazing good of just a good Netflix show or a good cup of coffee or a good ice cream or a really good dinner or whatever, you know, just looking at those small things, a good phone conversation with a friend of yours on the phone, you know, or just the temperature being right in your house for a day, you know, anything, anything. And, um, to little pups, right? To little puppies. And it can be anything, but just appreciating that good and then surrendering to the good and allowing good to come into your life, allowing more good moments to come in and less negativity and complaining. And I'll tell you something, as somebody that used to complain all the time and was negative all the time and was angry all the time, right? Once you make a concerted effort on a daily basis, it takes 21 days supposedly to change any kind of habit, right? Once you make a concerted effort, I don't know how long it took me, six months, because <laughs> I'm hard, right? But like, once you make a concerted effort to start being more positive and happier and content on a daily basis and looking at the world in a more positive way and looking at the world through the, the, the perspective of positivity, then you, um, you know, then you, uh, your life starts to change and then you start seeing every day the li your life through a positive you have to at first it's kind of like you have to force it a little bit if there's somebody out there that falls to the negative or if you're somebody out there that uh typically says a lot of negative stuff or you know has a negative attitude about people or things or life or whatever if you start every day just doing gratitude lists or affirmations or just affirming the positive saying today's going to be a good day see i would say that at first and in my head i'd hear no it's not <laughs> I really would, you know, oh, you say that, but some crap's going to happen, or you got up late, or, you know, like, you don't look great today, or you, you could lose, you know, 10 pounds or 100 pounds. I mean, it was just constant negativity in my head. It was like the tape in my head was constantly negative, right? And once I started consciously working on a daily basis, so if you don't know the story, my husband, Alex, I asked him what he wanted for Christmas, and he said for you to be happy every day in the next year, right? So I took a picture of myself smiling and I gave it to him. He still has it next to his bed upstairs. That year, every day, because I was so negative, I worked on being positive every single day. And now I look at the world in a completely different way, in a completely different way, you know? But it took some work and it still takes some work. I don't wake up every day just being like, oh my God, it's happening. Some days I do, some days I do, but a lot of days, most days I don't. Most days it takes 10 or 15 minutes of me doing a little bit of work in the morning, you know, and that's okay. 
You know, that's like putting on your uh, uniform for going to work. It's just putting on our emotional uniform to go to work. So anyway, um, I kind of like that analogy, em emotional uniform. Anyway, let me know what you think about those meditations in the comment section below. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, my glasses. <laughs> Bye.